Hi, I'm Peter Bell. I'm the CEO of Kermode Resources. I got an email from a, sh a shareholder, I guess, <laughs> a random person I haven't met before. Uh, but uh, thanks for the nice question, May. Much appreciated. Uh, so, substance of the question was twofold. One, are you planning a rollback? And two, what are your plans for 2022? Uh, Short one first, rollback. There are no immediate plans for a rollback. However, we are a BC company, so we can do a rollback without a meeting. Um, in Ontario, you need an annual meeting to get a rollback approved on the stock uh, consolidation. In BC, you don't. So while there are no plans to do one at this point, there's it's pretty easy to uh, do one quickly and promptly. Uh, I've said it a few times in various places and I'll say it again right now. I would like to have 5 to 10 million shares out on the other side of a fix-up. Um, and then the question, what is a fix-up? Well, that's related to the plans for 2022. So really the most important thing is to maintain compliance with the TSX Venture and to continue to be listed, right? And to hit all our, our major requirements as a public company. Um, that's kind of like a baseline situation that we have to do to, to, to continue to exist. And, and I consider that as a, a first level of success. Um, it's a pretty low bar, but it's an important bar <laughs> to get over. Um, what are the costs associated with that and, and how far are we from accomplishing that? Uh, these are, this is, I'm talking about an ongoing thing, really. Um, we're facing an, our audit, our fiscal year end is October 31st. So by the end of January, we'll have audited financials due. And that timeline is important. We've got our interim ones done from the summer already, back a couple months ago already. And the, these next audited financials are, are the big hurdle that will be my first time going through an audit as a CEO of a public company. Lots of questions about that and stuff that happened with the old management team. Lots of questions there too. But that's not what's going to get market excited, right? That's just uh, staying in the game. So the stuff that I think about for 2022 that's uh, set to get the, the market excited for, for the company is, uh, you know, that's the substance of a fairly long conversation if you want to get into the details. But uh, the short version is we have a couple property interests already secured and we have an LOI on another new one that we want to get. And um, we have a guy in BC, Andy Randall, um, from geologist from Vancouver. He does very high quality work and we have a property interest with him that I'd like to expand on and do more work with him. Um, I'd also like to have a little more hands-on involvement in the planning of the work programs and, and what we do and how it relates to kind of generating promotional news flow. Um, and the other thing is then Nevada. So we inherited this interest in this Seascape project, lots of questions about that, but uh, we do what we can to make that one work uh, with our partner <laughs> uh, and joint venture Southern Empire. We have 15%. Uh, but we've also secured a LOI on another a property that has a, a an old mine um, in Nevada. It's an old silver mine from the 1860s. That's the one that has the short pathway to you know promotional results. Um, we've I funded work there. So if you've been paying attention, there's been a shares for debt settlement and there's about $85,000 in debt that I put into the company. Um, about 70 of that was for exploration work and 60 of that was for the riot for Nevada. And there's an additional 20 Canadian, 20,000 Canadian that went to our exploration services contractor down there and shares for debt that, um, gives us more budget to work with. And so work is ongoing there with the LIDAR scanning of the old mines. And then the next plan after that is geochem. And then there are some questions about what comes after that. But my preferred path at that point would probably be underground drilling. Um, our contractor has a customized drill that they have built for underground drilling in situations like this. So we could potentially mobilize pretty simply and effectively to do some drilling at the face in the old mine. Um, but before we do that, uh, there's a lot we have to do to understand <laughs> what the old mine is. Uh, we don't really know the size or shape of it yet, and we don't really know what the grades were of any of the material, right? So hence the LIDAR scanning for the structural interp and then the geochem to start getting a sense of that. Um, a passing detail to mention is probably use XRF quite extensively to help give us real-time results when we're sampling underground in the mine. And after that, uh, there's a lot to say, right? Uh, I do th think of this as a situation where there's a lot of room to do more things 
Um, budgetary constraints are the big one for us, um, but we are a public company and we can find ways to incentivize people to do things with us. So if there are property vendors out there who want to play ball or, or we, we want to go and finance to undertake more new initiatives, that's, a, that's in the cards too, right? Those are, it's a question of when we do that, not if we do that. Um, and, and my answer so far has been first things first. So the first things are to keep the company alive and do some uh, basic work on the property interests we have and then to secure kind of smaller baby step uh, other property interests with uh, preferred counterparties, right? Which uh, the LOI with Carrington Consult, uh, with Gold Range, that came from Robert Carrington. And so that's a first step, uh, first example of that. And... The, as I say, the audits are due in January 2022. So right out of the gate, it's not going to be fireworks for the market from a news release perspective on that, but it is going to be really mission critical. Um, we also have this exploration work funded that um, is ongoing at Rye Patch. Um, we only have an LOI on that property at this point, so does the market care? Up for debate. Um, but secure that interest into the lease move it into the full full definitive agreement and then start to you know have that more substantial press release uh, news flow about that stuff okay that's that's something that gets me excited about 2022 for for the company right um and then beyond that there's a a lot of uncertainty and we could go in this direction we could go in that direction uh so far my plan of attack has been to do as much as possible with as little as possible so rather than come out and try and do a financing you know a month after the takeover or immediately after the takeover and try and recapitalize the company i've held on to the cash that we had uh, approximately a hundred thousand dollars in treasury and then used my own cash privately to fund exploration and, and kind of business development essential work that we have done and and here we are in december now looking back at, at how that's gone the last few months. Um, I am now plus 10% shareholder of the company. Um, we've had kind of minimal dilution, eight million eight to nine million shares out since I took over. Um, so, you know, when you ask about a rollback and you ask about plans for 2022, one of the things that you might be kind of implicitly asking about is like, are we gonna get that brutal rollback and dilutive financing? Um, we haven't done it yet, and I'll say that I do feel that I have a fiduciary responsibility to the shareholders of the company to give them a chance to have a meaningful win, right? And that uh, <laughs> that entails being really strategic and, and doing as much as possible with as, as little as possible, right? And, and that's what I have been doing since I've taken over. So... At some point, we're going to need to scale up and, and do a larger, you know, actually do a financing. Um, there's been a lot of expressions of interest and, and I probably frustrated some of the investors who would have liked me to do a round already. Um, but I'm trying to send the message to the shareholders and, and the investing audience more broadly that there is a, is a paramount emphasis on on respecting the existing shareholders of the company and giving them a chance to succeed um, I don't really know a lot of them I don't have a lot of understanding of the details of some of the questions of how some of them became shareholders and what price they paid for stock uh, lots of questions I don't understand but I cannot be punitive to them just because uh, I, this is there's been a change in management or anything like that no um, I'm not <laughs> here to to roll them back and do a financing at a at an ultra low price uh, with the purpose of diluting the existing base that's not the object objective my objective is to fix the company and, and to get it moving forward in the right direction um, that will entail some dilution at some point because we're a junior mining company with no revenue no cash flow uh, only cash outflow so the only spending we do is financed you know by risk capital and I'm not planning to do more of those shares for debt transactions. It's really going, we're going to be a normal junior mining company as best as we can. Um, but, you know, it's in this turnaround, a re re reboot <laughs> phase right now. So uh, lots more to say about all this and I'll call it there for now. Hopefully the audio is okay on this recording. Uh, wanted to give you a glimpse of what it looks like out here in Victoria, BC in December. <sighs>
not bad. Uh, a little chilly today, but uh, grateful to be here and grateful to have a chance to take a leadership role in this in this company and have the trust of uh, <laughs> all the people involved in it. So thank you for the question, May. Uh, I'll send I'll post this on YouTube and, and distribute it online as well and send it to you by email. Um, it's a pretty important basic question. What are the plans for 2022 and are you planning a rollback? Uh, I'll say it again. No, we're not planning a rollback immediately, but we can do one uh, with very prompt notice. We don't need a shareholder meeting like they do in Ontario. We can just do a rollback um, without shareholder permission in BC. So I'm not planning one, but there is one possible at some time. That's always a possibility with these junior mining companies. And as I've said, I would like to have five to 10 million shares out after we've fixed the company. And then the other question is 2022, what are the plans? Continue to fix the company, right? That's the baseline. Continue to get us in compliance with basic things in the exchange and then generate some news that'll make the market care about us. Right. And in detail, um, there's property interests in our projects in BC with our existing uh, deal with Andy Randall and his group for the Vedette project. That's I'm bullish on that. And then there's other stuff in Nevada that we already have this LOI on and the Rye Patch. I'm bullish on that. And then there's new properties. You know, I'm always hunting for properties and people who I feel like would be good counterparties. Um, a criteria that I really place an emphasis on is. Uh, uh, exploration services contractors I want the property vendors to be able to contract back the work uh, I understand that there's some conflicts of interest in, in this side uh, when you're getting the people the vendors to do the work and, and we need independent oversight of course but in my experience nobody knows the property better than the vendors so I like to work with people who can be involved in managing and executing work programs at the properties that we get from them and that work needs to be done to public market standards right so there's a lot that goes along with that um but yeah ear to the ear to the ground listening for those that rumbling herd of bison rolling across the plains because uh i do think it's a very bullish time here uh not not the time for this company to really dial it back um we have to be careful about overreach and not over committing ourselves um, but you know, let's go, right? Thanks. Bye. Uh, you can dig up my contact emails online, kermoni.com, uh, Peter Bell, new, uh, Peter Bell mining at gmail.com, 250-588-6939. Thanks. Bye.